Welcome back to Chemisode, and this is the second part of our chromatography trilogy, and this is going to be looking at your different types of column chromatography. So you're looking at um, HPLC, simple co column chromatography, and also your gas chromatography. Um, remember, we've got the apps there, so for you to have a look at, um, available on iTunes at the moment, so only for your Apple devices, um, but yeah. Check them out, have a look at it, see how you go. Let's have a look at um, column HPLC and GC. Uh, just a quick recap, if you didn't, if you missed the first one on paper and thin and the basic theory of it, um, remember that we have chromatography works by having a mobile phase moving over a stationary phase, and chromatography is all about separating things, so the separation is due to the polarity of the compounds, or the components in the sample being analysed. So things that have a different polarity will be attracted differently to the different phases um, and they'll be obviously separated out. And the key words here are adsorbed, not not to be confused with ab ad sorry absorbed. This is adsorbed, so adsorbed, where weak bonds are formed to the stationary phase. Let's have a crack at um, colon chromatography now. We won't waste any more time on this because you should have a fair understanding. If not, go back and review chromatography part one on paper and thin layer chromatography. Column chromatography now. All right, imagine this. Basically, you've got a burette, which is on a, um, filled with sand. This is pretty much what column chromatography is. It's a very, very um, rough way of doing it, but yeah. You've got this type of column here, which is like a burette. You've got to tap down the bottom here, and inside it, you're packed full of a stationary phase. So the stationary phase in column chromatography is packed inside your column here. It's generally packed with a silica, so once again, kind of what we use on the outside of our um, TLC plates, so aluminium oxide, just because it gives you a good separation. But it doesn't always have to be packed with silica. This is just an example. The sample is introduced to the top of the column, so we put it in here, and what happens is we use gravity to move it down. And as it moves down through your um, column, obviously, the attraction that um, your different parts of your sample have to the silica might make it um, take a long time to go through the column or it might go through the column really quickly and move through with your mobile phase. Um, so your mobile phase is introduced at the top as well so we're obviously always flowing something through here through the column and it's just the way that um, the mobile phase drags through your sample gives you your separation. So something with a similar um, polarity to the stationary phase, so in terms of aluminium oxide, uh, generally could be polar, a mixture of polar and unpolar really, um, it will attract very much to the stationary phase if it is in the same polarity as the stationary phase, and therefore it will take a long time to move through. So obviously here, our green sample here has a strong affinity, is very attracted to our stationary phase, whereas our darker greyish colour here is obviously not attracted to the stationary phase, it's probably more attracted to the mobile phase, so therefore it's moving through the column quite quickly. The way we identify substances in column chromatography is kind of twofold. One, we could actually measure the time they take for the, um, for the substance between when you inject the substance at the top here and it elutes at the bottom here. So that time is called the RT time. And what you could look at is under the same conditions, so the same temperature, the same flow rate of your column, and the same type of column as well, you can probably identify what your substance is because it will take the same time if it's the same co compound. So that's how you can use um, column chromatography as qualitative analysis, where you're looking for your RT time, the time taken to elute out of the column. I'm using that word elute um, just to let you know, elute means when it comes out of the column. So if something elutes, or the elution time, time it takes to um, t come out of the column. So when you put it in, and or you inject it at the top here, it elutes at the bottom. Next up is a um, improvement on column chromatography. As we always do, we go from the, the simplest to the most important. We have HPLC. This is high performance, or high pressure, liquid chromatography, where we have a column, 
but instead of having a long column like a burette stand or something like that, we have a very densely packed column and we use liquid under a very high pressure. So our mobile phase is pushed in under a very high pressure and that's basically the difference. It gives you a bit of a better resolution as well. It kind of separates things out a bit better and you can use a bit more interesting things as well. HPLC, <coughs> excuse me, pretty much the same as column chromatography. However, the stationary phase, as I said, is very densely packed and the mobile phase is under a very high pressure. This method allows for separation and resolution. A detector is also added at the end of the column, which allows to see when, column, when compounds are eluting. So what we also add in here is a detector, which um, once your sample has run through the column, it's all separated out into your mixtures, and the detector actually sets off and gives you a reading when something elutes. So you can actually have a recording of when this, how long this happens. Obviously your, um, your column here is of a certain size, so having the same column will allow you to better kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, compare your results to things you find in textbooks and um, literature values as well. So, um, detector gives you information about the concentration of the sample, not just what it is as well. You have an RT time when the you have a reading on the detector, but also you also get a graph that comes out of it as well. Depending on how big the area is underneath the graph in your detector, gives you information about how much is there. So HPLC is a bit better than um, column chromatography and everything we've done before because it can actually give you how much is in your sample, which is a great thing to have. So it gives you quantitative analysis. After it's finished with the detector, it goes into the waste and obviously you have to discard it because um, when you're running HPLC, you're constantly getting a flow of your mobile phase through your column. Okay, so that's a the theory behind high pressure or high performance liquid chromatography where you get um, a, a pump under high pressure, you inject your sample and you start running a detector. Let's move on to have a look at our next one which is a bit better again, it's called gas chromatography or GC for short. So gas chromatography, here is the bad boy here. Um, gas chromatography is probably the most most used chromatography in um, VCO, I'd say. So um, it's nice to get your head around this as one of the, the major parts of your VCE chem, um, in unit three at least, with um, chromatography. So your theory is that it still works based on the same principle, where your separation is due to based on polarity. The only difference here is that part of your instead of having a mobile phase which is liquid, you have a mobile phase which is a gas. So you have your gas cylinder here, which gets pumps gas through your stationary phase being your column constantly. So um, mobile phase is a gas. Your stationary phase is this column which is packed with a silica gel. So once again, we use silica as our, um, as our stationary phase but it's in this tiny column. It's a very, very thin, very, very narrow column, but it's wound into this coil, which allows it to be a very, very long column. Sometimes these columns can be actually as long as 30 meters. And they're wound into coil and put inside a small oven. That's gas chromatography, the basic schematic of it. Gas goes in, injection port for your sample. So what you actually do is you inject your sample here and the carrier gas it takes it into the oven and into your stationary phase. It has a lot of time, about 30 meters, to separate based on the polarity and based on the adsorption and desorption from the stationary silica gel. And then it comes out into the detector and once again, your detector picks up the readings from your different compounds in your mixture that you injected. So I'll quickly read through this. So you get a long column coated in a stationary phase. It's wound into a coil placed into an oven. The oven actually allows you to control the temperature at which your stationary phase is at. So it's quite a good thing having it in an oven. If you just did it in a lab without an oven, what happens is your temperature would vary and therefore your RT times, your detection times, would be a little bit off each time. So the oven allows you to control the temperature. It's also to keep everything in a gasiduous form as well. So a sample is injected at a high temperature. This injection point here is about 3,000 degrees, 
now I think I'm making things up. Might not be 3,000 degrees, but it's very, very hot anyway. So it can, straight away vaporizes everything. Um, maybe it's only 300. I don't know. It's very hot. A sample is injected at a high temperature, so all compounds turn into gases. An inert carrier gas is pumped through the column, and the compounds are detected as they elute from the column. So once again, elution, when the compounds that are in the mixture that you inject come out and reach the detector. Retention times, once again, can also be used to identify compounds. So a different compound will have a different time that it comes out at, so you can actually identify what that what your thing is. And even better, the concentration of a compound can be found by calibrating, making a calibration curve of the area underneath the graph. So that's what um, basically these types of column chromatography is all about. You have a column and you wait measuring the time that it takes for the sample to come out. That's what happens here. You wait for the time for the sample to come out here and same with gas chromatography. Once it goes through the column, you're detecting the time it comes to come out. What I've got here is how things can be used in a qualitative manner. This is what your different this is what your detector actually comes out with when you have um, your HPLC or your gas chromatography. Your detector actually reads like this, like a little graph, and it has little peaks on it here. These peaks represent a compound being eluted and detected. As you can see, the different peaks have different um, times, so that time is what tells you what the compound is. And the area underneath the graph which you don't have to calculate, the machine gives you the area, but that area underneath the graph, that tells you how concentrated or what, what the concentration of your sample is. So that's how we can use a qualitative. Qualitative is the RT values, when the compound eludes. The next video I'm going to do is going to be about using it qualitatively, how to make what's known as a calibration curve and actually work out the concentration of something in a sample. That's all I've got time for for this one in terms of your basic theory on these three types of things and your qualitative analysis. Next video, part three, will be on calibration curves and quantitative analysis using chromatography.